Hmm. Hello, family. This is Deborah with Black Education TV. I am coming to you. I haven't been out here in a while. Um, I don't come out here as often as I used to because I have so many things on my table to do. But that is no excuse. The Most High has put it on my heart uh, for some time now to deal with a particular subject and I've put it off and for that I am sorry to the Most High for allowing myself to be more engulfed in um, what I would say the cares of this life than the things that he wants me to speak about to the Daughters of Zion in particular. One thing I must say is it is high time for us as the Daughters of Zion to awaken out of our sleep. Uh, the enemy has come in like a flood. The Most High is lifting up a standard, you see. I've gotten a number of questions and video requests from many of you, I would say over the past 12 months, and I have not been able to um, get to those requests. Or not that I haven't been able to, I haven't made the time to get to those requests. And so I am going to cover many of these topics, um, Yah willing, in the coming weeks because I do believe that it's important that the Daughters of Zion know where they stand in everything because there are so many mixed messages out there, so many mixed messages being given. So much confusion being offered. It's confusion when you don't know uh, who's telling the truth, who's, who's speaking of themselves and who's speaking uh, what the Most High wants them to speak. It's so many people that are appointing themselves Scripture says many are called, few are chosen. You see, there are many that are called, but chosen is another, a horse of a different color, something totally different. To be chosen of Yah means he has a work for you to do, and that work must be done. It must be accomplished, and the Most High will force his will in your life. Ask Jonah. He will force his will in your life, you see. And we cannot kick against the will of Yah, but we have to make sure that the things that we do, that we say are the will of Yah, that there has to be fruit as a result of it. Scripture says, you shall know them by the fruit that they bear. And many times there's, the, just, there's just this confusion that is all wrapped and tied in religion. So many people are so very religious and they confuse that with spirituality. There's a huge difference in being religious and being spiritual. You see, there's a huge difference in those who have a walk with the Most High and those who have a walk with their religion, you see, because there are many people who have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. There is a power associated with walking with the Most High. If you just have a walk to where you just read the scripture, you pray, uh, you fast from time to time, you you wear your garments, uh, you observe the Shabbat, or whatever it is that you do, these things that anyone can do, you're no different than the so-called Jews over there in Israel who are saying that they are the, the chosen seed. You're no different than them if that's all your walk involves. If you are not having conversations with the Most High where He is speaking to you, where He is leading you, He's guiding you, and that your life is reflecting um, some type of... Um, um, sincere walk with him to where others know. And I'm not talking about the things that you have. Scripture says that a man's life doesn't consist in the abundance of things which he possess. And many times people like to use their possessions or the things that they have to say that they've been blessed or to say that this is proof that Yah has blessed them. But to that is not how you measure blessings. Um, there are people that are poor who are closer to the most high than those who are rich. If if you measure blessings by things, then no one can complain about the atheist billionaires who have all this money, have all these possessions, but they have no relationship with the most high. You can't complain about them if you're measuring it by a house or a car or a boat or a mansion or land. You can't measure Yah's blessings only by those things. And that's not to say that those cannot be blessings. That's not what I'm trying to say here, but you cannot measure the blessings of Yah or how close you are to Yah because of those things. Because if you did, by those standards, you can call Oprah blessed. And this woman is a billionaire. She has many houses, much land, a lot of money, you see. And yet we know that we cannot attribute what she has as blessings from the Most High Yah. 
Many of you may disagree with me on that, but um, none of that is proof that she has a walk or a relationship with Yah, although I'm pretty sure she will believe that somehow those things prove that she has a relationship with the Most High, but that does not. But anyway, I want to be dealing with a subject um, in the coming weeks um, directed at the Daughters of Zion in particular. Not to say that I won't mention other things because you have to speak of things in connection with the condition of the Daughters of Zion to actually articulate uh, what is going on. Um, and I'm going to have to say this, family, this, this series is going to be, it's going to be bittersweet. It's going to be a tough love series because I think the Daughters of Zion have gotten too weak spiritually. We are supposed to be strong spiritually, you see. We've gotten too weak spiritually because of how we are being directed as it relates to the things that happen in our lives and to our families. And we need to have a spiritual understanding of why things are happening. We need to be able to have a spiritual understanding. We, as the daughters of Zion, in the past have been able to connect to the Most High Yah, you see. Um, when you look at our four mothers, when you look at Sarah... When you look at uh, Rebecca, you see, our foremothers were able to connect to the Most High. Sarah was to the point where she was able to say to her, her own husband, she says, um, Abram, I'm going to let the Most High judge between you and me. You see, there were some things that um, Sarah felt that she needed to happen in her family. And her husband, Abraham, at first wasn't in complete agreement, but the Most High had to come to him and said, hearken to the voice of your wife, Sarah. You see, the Most High had to tell him this. The fact that he had to say hearken or listen to the voice of your wife, Sarah, proves that there may have been a little bit of resistance there, you see. And so there are some things that I have to speak and say to the Daughters of Zion, and it will be part of a tough love series because we're at the point now where we can no longer afford to be coddled into the kingdom. As a matter of fact, being coddled could keep you out of the kingdom because you will find yourself out of the will of the Most High Yah if you are not dealing with things seriously and on a spiritual level. Um... I love my uh, family, my brothers and my sisters, but at some point, um, the scripture tells you that open rebuke is better than secret love. Uh, there are so many things we are all faced with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, many don't understand what is happening because it's a spiritual battle. We're looking at the natural, and we're only considering the natural, but we're not considering those things that are causing this natural stuff to happen to us. Um... There's a war going on, family. Many of you all may remember um, a message I did, I believe it was last year. I was standing right over there by the peach tree where I was talking about, um, <clears throat> I was talking about how if you can see into the spirit realm, you would see that around you, around you, that there is a battle going on. While we're dealing with these little small fires that the enemy sends, he sends these small fires to get you distracted. So you're busy trying to put this fire out and that fire and that fire and this one over here and that one behind you, that one before you. There is a huge engulfing flame around you spiritually. The enemy wants you to get your mind off of this one, the huge battle. And so he sends these little small occurrences, these little small things to distract you from those things that are very important to your spirit, very important to your life and your walk with the Most High. He sends those things. But we've got to get ourselves to a point, um, family. Uh, this is to, to the daughters of Zion and to the brothers. We've got to get ourselves to the point where when we see these small things, we know how to, in some cases, ignore them or in some cases, deal with them quickly and get back to the, the real fight or the real battle because that's what the enemy is trying to keep us out of and he has succeeded for the most part. But we've got to get this one thing in mind. As long as there's breath in your body, 
you have time, you have therefore opportunity to bring yourself to that right level of a uh, spiritual walk with the Most High because this walk is not just natural. You can dress yourself the way you want, the way you believe is pleasing to the Most High Yah, but you can you can be destroyed in those garments, you see. You can wrap your hair the best you to, to the best of your ability. You can um, wear your fringes and you can say all of the Shabbat Shalom's you want, but at the end of the day, if your walk with the Most High is not where it should be, you can find yourself in the judgment seat. And so we as the daughters of Zion, we've got work to do. As I've said before, we used to have a very close relationship with the Most High, our foremothers did. Many of them were able to reach the Most High on a level that many of us have never seen before. We want to be to the point where we have full assurance and security knowing that the Most High is going to hear us when we call Him. Because He says, call for the morning women. Call for those who know how to pray. Call for those who know how to entreat the Most High and to seek Him and to cry out for our brothers. You see, this is what we were commanded to do. But the enemy has sent so many different distractions. Yes. That's not to say that you are not to deal with these distractions. In some cases, you do have to deal with these distractions, like this fly that keeps coming around here. <laughs> but I'm outside, though, so I can really just ignore him. He's, he's out here where he lives, right? So we've got to learn how to deal with distractions in a productive way, you see. Um, it can be a distraction for, I'll just say, remember when our... Some of our ancestors back in the early 1900s when a cross would be burning in their yard and they were in some cases sitting having bible study or having dinner with their family that is a noteworthy distraction if you get that kind of distraction you don't just sit there and say well we're having bible study so i'm going to ignore this distra distraction um, in some cases, that means you got to get out of Dodge, you got to prepare to fight, uh, or if the person left the burning cross in your yard and they left, you got to go put that fire out, you see? So some distractions do have to be dealt with, but at the same time, you can't allow them to, to drain your focus off the task at hand. The task at hand is that the days are growing short and the enemy is busy. And we as the children of Yah, we as the daughters of Zion, we've got to be busy too, doing our father's business knowing that the time is short and that um, there are many spirits going about. Many of us don't want to deal with the spiritual aspect of things at all. We only want to deal with the natural. But when you don't deal with the spiritual things, you can get caught off guard. And that's what we need to prevent, family. We need to learn how to pray. Um, prayer is not about the fancy words that you say or uh, screaming the loudest and trying to be heard and saying all the things that you think the Most High wants to hear. The Most High is more moved by your tears and your sincerity than He is by your, your uh, many words that you may speak in your prayer, your loud prayers. He's more moved by your broken and contrite spirit. He says that He draws nigh to those that are of a broken and contrite spirit. So your sincerity is more important than the words that you speak. Um, I think it's time for me to cut this off now, Daughters of Zion. Get ready for the Tough Love series. Um, I'm doing this because I love you, uh, my sisters and my brothers. Um, so just understand where I'm coming from, but the days are short, family. We have no more time to play. We have no more time to be coddled into the kingdom because the coddling can keep you out of the kingdom. Okay, with that, I'm going to say shalom, and I'm going to go ahead and head into our um, Shabbat morning service, which shall begin in about 10 minutes or so. So, shalom, family.